Right on schedule, the back-to-school season is kicking into high gear in the London Drugs Computer Department. There are lots of things people are going to be looking for. Laptops, printers, monitors, all sorts of accessories, but there's one thing we're going to spend more time on than anything else, and that's the laptops. And there's three things that are on people's minds this year as they're shopping. That's they want something lightweight, they want something stylish, and they also want something fast. Fortunately, there's an answer to that. Ultrabooks are the answer to all three of those requirements. They are very lightweight. The ones we're going to show you in just a minute are under three pounds. They are very, very stylish, and you'll see that in the pictures. They are also very fast. Uh, the use of solid state drives as well as Intel's latest generation of Core i5 processor makes them not only fast for a lightweight laptop, but in many cases actually a little bit faster than a full-size laptop from just last year, which is quite an impressive feat of engineering. But of course, as with any other computers, there are some that are better than others, and we're only going to show you the best options. When Jim and I started brainstorming this project at London Drugs, we looked at all the options that were available in Ultrabooks, and of course the MacBook Air as the original Ultrabook had to be included. There was no question of that for even a moment. The Asus ZenBook Prime though, that's brand new. That was the strongest contender we could find in the Windows notebooks. If nothing else, the build quality of it and the beautiful 1080p IPS screen put it heads and shoulders above the rest. So there are your best of the best. And now let's go in and take a little bit closer look at each of them and how they stack up to each other. Let's take a look at how these two notebooks actually quite literally stack up compared to one another. The MacBook Air is a little bit thinner, but the ZenBook Prime is only slightly thicker and comes out slightly lower weight. So I guess we can call that one pretty much a tie. Ports are very similar as well. Both have an SD card slot, which is going to be very, very helpful for students, uh, especially anyone who has to take any photos as, parts of, as part of a project. Both have two USB 3.0 ports, and having done some work recently with USB 3.0 compared to USB 2.0, it is a huge advantage to have that. Both have video outputs, which will allow students to connect to either HDTVs or projectors with older style VGA adapters. Now, the VGA connector on the ZenBook Prime is a proprietary part from Asus, but on the plus side, Asus does throw that in the box for free. Let's face it, students on the go aren't going to carry around an external keyboard and mouse with their laptops. They're going to need to have a really good keyboard there. The MacBook Air delivers quite nicely. Uh, the keys have a wonderful feel to them. The backlighting is very good and kicks in very automatically. The trackpad is also fantastic. The glass texture, perfect. And knowing that it's glass, it's not going to wear out. Likewise, the keyboard on the ZenBook Prime is very, very nice. Uh, the backlighting is bright. I wish that it were a little bit better about automatically coming on and off, but there is an adjustment for the level of brightness, which is a very welcome addition. The trackpad also, again, faithful interpretation of what Apple's done. It's a very large glass trackpad, and there's a little bit more input lag when doing gestures than I do with the MacBook Air, which Obviously, it's a slight point in the Mac's favor. The only other issue I have with it is, going back to the keyboard, that the function keys serve primarily as function keys, which means if you want to use them to change volume or turn the wireless on and off, you have to hold down the FN key in the lower left-hand corner. While there are obviously a lot of similarities between both the MacBook Air and the Asus ZenBook Prime, there are some places where they diverge. Apple style is very understated, very very flat, very satin finish. Asus has gone with a bit more of a, a bright, polished metal look. They're both very nice styles. Honestly, there's no way to call a winner or a loser here. It's all personal taste.
come and take a look at both of them and decide which one you like better. Both the MacBook Air and the ZenBook Prime are fantastic, very lightweight, stylish, and fast general purpose computers. No question, either one would be a perfect addition for a student, except that there is one option we haven't considered so far. Let's take a look at how these two notebooks actually quite literally stack up compared to one another. The MacBook Air is a little bit thinner, but the ZenBook Prime is only slightly thicker and comes out slightly lower weight. So I guess we can call that one pretty much a tie. Ports are very similar as well. Both have an SD card slot, which is going to be very, very helpful for students, uh, especially anyone who has to take any photos as, parts of, as part of a project. Both have two USB 3.0. The only big complaint I get about the iPad from my customers is typing on it. And of course, for a student, this is a tremendously important aspect of what they're going to do with any computer that they purchase. Fortunately, companies like Logitech give us really good answers. And while there are other options, the Logitech Ultra Thin keyboard cover is the best one I've seen yet. The Logitech keyboard attaches very, very firmly via magnets to the side of the iPad in the same way as the Apple Smart Cover. This was strong enough that we could actually pick the entire thing up by the keyboard cover and the iPad didn't fall out. Similarly, when it's docked into the, the little recess just above the keys, it attaches magnetically there as well, which is a really nice touch because it means you can pick the entire thing up by either the keyboard dock or the iPad and the whole thing stays in one solid piece. The keys themselves, a little bit smaller than what you find on either the MacBook Air or the ZenBook Prime, but they have a really nice feel to them. The only downside compared to the other two is they're not backlit. If the iPad is such a great disruption that it can replace either the MacBook Air or the ZenBook Prime, or any other laptop for that matter, what can't it do? Where does it fall flat? Because nothing is perfect. I think the biggest problems you're going to find with the iPad are if you are doing a lot of heavy number crunching, so a lot of engineering students may want to think twice, as well as anyone who needs to write academic papers with lots and lots of footnotes, very detailed stuff. Graduate students may want to think twice as well about it, but the iWork Suite gives you pages, numbers, and keynote. So very good basic equivalents to Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. There are also adapters, so you can connect the iPad out to either a high definition TV or to an old projector, just as with the other two notebooks. So there's no question as to whether you can provide a nice presentation in a class. So we have two really, really nice notebook computers. I think personally, the MacBook Air is a little bit more refined. You also get a few more options to upgrade it, upgrading either the memory or the solid state drive. The Asus you can as well, but it's a little bit trickier to do that. And finding third party accessories is gonna be a little bit harder for the Asus as well. Now, that said, we also have the disruptive influence that is the iPad. And I think for most students heading back to school, the iPad is probably the way to go, although I would get the iPad with the cellular connection, just so that when you're on the when you're on the bus, when you're on the train, you can still get things done. You can still be connected to your school's resources. But ultimately, the best thing to do: drop by the store, check them out, and make the decision for yourself. Thank you very much for your time.